Hello, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy and nice to see you again. Today I'm going to show you a really simple background. Um, I'm using chipboard but you could easily work onto a tag, um, whatever suits you. I'm going to use fresco finish paints and uh, I've got again always a selection of lights and mediums and darks and I'm going to show you how to incorporate some stamping into your background using a variety of um, mini stamps which are, are quite useful. I try to select a difference between bold ones, round ones, uh, different sizes of script. I quite like numbers, I like the structure of this one here as well. So it's just, there's plenty to choose from, it's always hard, hard to decide but a selection of those. If we stamp a feature image over the top, we're going to want to have an Archival Ink Versafine or Ranger Archival, a two that I use quite a lot. Um, if I'm going to emboss it, I'll use Versafine. If I'm not, I might use the Archival. Cut and dry foam is handy for applying the paint and acrylic blocks for stamps later on. Right, let's get started. So we're going to start with one of our lighter colours. This is Nougat. Um, I'm just tapping it on. You can do this technique with a paintbrush if you prefer. Um, when I'm building a background, I tend to start with um, a tapping motion. It's easier to blend the colours. So for many, many years, I've taught a technique called corner, corner, side. And it's a method of applying your colours to two corners and the opposite side. And it's just the an analytical side of me coming out. Um, I found that if I put colours, if I had zones to apply the colours to, that I found it easier to end up being random. So even though I'm starting off very structured, I end up being quite random. I, sometimes I don't think I make any sense whatsoever, but maybe if you watch you'll understand. So I've got very structured areas at the moment. Two corners and the opposite side in blue and two corners and the opposite side in nougat. So we've done that and it's all looking a bit blocky. So now what we've got to try and do is balance it by bringing um, some of the browns on tops of the blues and some of the blues on tops of the browns. But before I do that I'm going to sort of add depth so, we've got nougat on that side, let's use the other side of the foam to go a shade darker. This one's called Irish Cream. So I'm still working on my light area, but I'm not applying quite as much paint as I did the first time. And I'm also starting to encroach on the blue zone. So I've left a little bit of nougat there and I've got the Irish cream coming round the edge and cutting over onto the blue bits. So very much starting on the edge and then just kind of pulling it in a little bit. So that's my two corners and the opposite side. Tap, tap, tap. All right. Now let's do the same thing with the blue. So I've got my mermaid on that side of the foam. So trusty old beach hut is going to go on the other side of the foam there and then same thing tapping that around the edge and encroaching onto the brown a little bit building a bit of depth so the the beach hut is a lot more translucent than Irish cream which is opaque so with, when I put Beach Hut on top of Irish Cream, you actually are going to see the Irish Cream coming through. Now remember, with a translucent like Beach Hut, if you want the colour to be a lot more bold, then um, you need to dry it off and apply it twice. second layer you'll get a more vivid version of it, a much more obvious version of it. Okay, so we're starting to build some cover. It's still looking a little bit patchy in places but that's okay, I'm going to work through that. So now we can go back to our light colour. So the nougat is quite pale. So let's just almost start the procedure all over again but with a little less paint because this is our second layer. But 
this is where the magic starts to happen because as you tap nougat over the top of the original layer, it acts as a blender because it softens out some of those areas. But you can still kind of see the colours coming through because I'm only using it really, really lightly. I haven't got as much on the foam and I really try to work it into the foam so that I've tapped it right thoroughly in, into the foam. Again, let's just put a bit more here. And this is why I often say when I'm demoing it shows that a light colour like Snowflake or Nougat is, your, is a really handy one to have around because it helps not back things. If you get a bit over exuberant and you've added too much of a colour somewhere then you can easily knock it back and then start to build your colours again. So do you see how this is starting to look a lot more blended? Just lightly tapping. Right, let's go back to the blues. So a little bit more of the mermaid. I, I've still roughly got my blue corner going on here, but I'm going to, again, just lightly tap the mermaid through a broader area. I'm trying to sort of get the colours to layer on top of each other, but I, I don't want the whole thing to look the same, so I still want to have some sort of identifiable blues blue like this this is still if you look it's still corner corner side in a blue and it's still corner corner side in a lighter brown but it, overall it's not looking so chunky back to a translucent and the other thing that's nice about this when you've gone to a light is coming over the top with beach hut the beach hut really pops up on the nougat areas it's hard to say nougat areas. <laughs> right, so quite happy with that. It's looking a lot more blended. I've still got my dark colours. So you can do exactly the same thing and add depth to your edges. And notice how sometimes when I'm coming over with these later layers, rather than tapping, I also start to sort of smooch it. Like, the, like you would when you're applying ink. Because you get that much softer. And I think too, by having the other colour on the other side, the lighter colour, you can, you can knock back and blend as well. Very, very light touch here. Right, and we'll do the same with the darker inky pool colour. So just a little, little bit on the foam. And we're kind of just building a bit of a border. Okay. Now, stamps. So, you could use that as it is, but I'm going to show you how to how to put some stamps on top and change the look of it altogether. So that background there is quite ideal if you wanted to stamp an image on top of it and then perhaps colour an image in. It's really good for um, any scrapbooking or any type of papers, just using it on paper and then for layers and other projects. Perfect. But if you want to add more interest to it using your stamps, it's not difficult to do it. A lot of people don't sort of realise how easy it, it can be to stamp with your paints and use your paint as an ink. Um, what I'm going to do is start with my bold one. So this image here is um, quite a bold design, very, very strong letters. So we're going to take a bit of ink, it's not ink, it's paint, and we're going to put it onto the stamp and you just tap it lightly on there. The aim is you don't want the paint going down into the dippy bits of the stamps. Now, I haven't got loads on there because it is quite a bold image and I'm gonna put the light on the blue areas. 
okay so it doesn't need to be perfect now if you don't want it to be so structured and blocky then one of the ways to do that is not ink it up not have loads and loads of paint on there so that you get this distressed effect another way of doing it is to perhaps tear a piece of paper I've just teared some cut and dry foam and use that as like a little mask okay so a bit more paint on there this time I've got a bit more of the um, warmer brown colors coming through and I'm going to go up the edges so I'm putting it still doing corner corner side but it is the white on top of the blue or the brownie shades on top of the blue shades and a little bit up here so I don't want it to look like I've gone corner corner side if I tear it up and mask it then it mixes it up a little bit so it's almost like not quite the same stamp and the other thing you can do is stamp it twice so again if we come back down here and just put a little section down the bottom there then it adds a bit more interest to it that way okay so that's really simple you do want to clean the paint off the stamp pretty fast I just use a baby wipe if you do put it to one side or you're thinking you might come back to it just lay a damp baby wipe on it like that and stack your stamps up tummy to tummy so that the rubber is always touching a baby wipe and then you can clean them later but you can even use um, a toothbrush to get down if you're worried in the in the dips I mean I don't I don't really worry about it it's only the top part raised part of the stamp that you stamp with so if stuff's stuck down in the dips it really doesn't matter Right, so that's that one now we want to contrast that with something else so we could go to num well we've got numbers on there we could go to smaller numbers or we could go to a script or something round that kind of thing so let's go to our next boldest one this is a postmark design mini 29 and we'll go on to the blue shades so again this is kind of bold so because it is a little bit bold choose your lighter color paint your finer, if, if you stamp in this manner with your really dark, dark colour, um, it's going to really sort of stand out a bit more than you might like. So I try to do my light, bolder stamps in the lighter colours. Okay, so this one is crossing over the brown into the blue. And if it's a little bit too pale, you can always mix some Beach Hut in for a bit more contrast. Don't put it everywhere, just a little bit of it. In fact, we might even have a teeny tiny bit of inky pool on there. And we're going to come at the side there. You can see how fast the paint dries. You do have to do this quite quickly on your stamps. Now, that's just given a little bit more interest. It's not hugely obvious, but that's okay. Clean that off. And then some script. Now, at any time, if you want to knock it back a bit, dry it and sand it. You can't really sand it while it's damp. The paint does dry really fast. But if you're going to give it a good old hit with a sanding block, it needs to sort of be a bit more bone dry. Right. So here, if you want to knock back some of the areas or you don't like if it's looking too structured and you want to distress it a little bit, then this is how you can do that. Great on top of the white numbers. So love that. It also, a light sand is great because it makes the surface even smoother for stamping on top of, which means you're going to get a better quality image. So the last step, a bit of script. This is one of my favourite scripts. It's one of the newer minis, Mini 62. 
and I just love it onto backgrounds like this. So usually fine scripts I go to the darker end of colours. So this one's a bit of chocolate pudding. And I'm only going to put it around the very edge in a couple of spaces. And the nice thing again, you can put it on top of um, existing layers. And great thing about script is, you know, stamp it more than once because the paint does seem to linger around a little bit longer. So as you get to those real dregs, you get some nice interesting things going on there. And the other thing I'll often do with script is stamp it in an alternate direction. Right, I'm going to finish off with some smaller numbers. These ones are quite distressed style. I'm trying to get the darker inky pool on there. So that might be a little bit blocky, so we've got a couple of choices. If we're quick, you can take a baby wipe and you can kind of use a baby wipe to knock it back so it doesn't look quite so blocky. Or use your sanding block. So remember, just by using the sanding block a little bit, it's going to lighten that off. And it just helps that blend through a little bit more. Right, the last thing that I would do on this is you could come around the edge with some Distress Ink, which is always going to look nice on these kind of colours. It's going to work quite well. And I'm kind of accentuating the corner corner side, that's the brown bit. And you could go to a, a bluey colour for the others. And of course you can always stamp with your Distress Ink as well if you wish. That's another option. But I think we've kind of got enough stamping on there for now. So there you have it. It is a corner corner side background but it's kind of ended up not looking as structured as that and using your um, stamps to blend the corners, the colours out across the whole pattern. Thanks for dropping by. We'll see you next time.